Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Sunfall Cycle. You are an important part of every. Bronze was just on, saying Bronze. that she has a value and an important part of, yeah, <laughs> part of the show. And it's true. Which show? Every this show. show. Wait, she she was talking about uh, Shikar. She has value and is an important part of that, that show. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know. I don't. I don't watch. <laughs> Je- Jesse, I've seen, you in there. <laughs> I've seen you in there. You see me in there, and you don't see. You don't see nothing. You don't see nothing. Called out. Me. You don't see nothing Jesse, about me. Jesse's so sundere. He pretends to be. You don't see nothing. But if anyone else watches, I'll kill him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's I don't love you, B- Baka. Baka. I still don't know what Baka means, but I know I use it far too much. Baka. You don't know what Baka means? I've never. No, wow. I don't use Baka or wow. no Baka. Baka. Or, I don't. I know. know what Baka is because of my favorite song from Yakuza, Baka Matai. You know that the that song he sings on karaoke. But what does Baka mean? Oh, it's like fool, fool. I know Baka Nani means what? Nani? You know? I don't know. I don't know these things. You guys all need to play Yakuza. That is the greatest game. Everyone needs to I play I want to play the Which one? not Yakuza. The one that's like the murder mystery? Judgment? That's yeah, I want to play that. That's Ooh, awesome. that one looked good. Yeah, that looks the neat. The new Yakuza Like a Dragon, Jesse, I think you would love it. It's kind of like a JRPG. And the protagonist is very goofy. He's not stoic like the one from the main series. I think it's up your alley. There is a mini game where, so there's a part of the game, just minor spoilers, but to sell you on it, where you are a hobo and you, there's a mini game where you have to race a cart and collect cans and beat the other hobos in order to get to win points to like, you know, feed yourself for the day. Go on. Were, and and it's it's like Mario Kart. I'm gonna let you know. Oh, oh, Mario. Yep, I'm already sold. <laughs> I don't even know what the rest of the game is, but you're telling me I'm Mario Kart my way to get uh, cans? Well, frankly, yeah, that's, it, a solid, it, that's a solid. That's a solid addition really cool to my game. life. It really humanizes. Like one of the people in your party is homeless, and like he uh, attacks people. Like, but like he's like a he's your friend. Like he's a a good friend. You know, like but you. you He's in your party. What? Like being homeless is kind of like a class. But then later on, you can <laughs> peck him into other stuff if you don't want him to be homeless anymore. But... Well, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Look, too. There's a dominatrix class. There is. Never this mind. Is, I'm back in, it. ladies and gentlemen. This I'm back in, game. baby. <laughs> she knows just what to say. You should have gone with that. You should have said like, "There's a dominatrix." I would have been like, <laughs> "Okay, yeah, yeah." yeah. It, there's a lot. There's a lot going on in that game that's amazing. Sold. Um, so the problem is, is, is it's an RPG. So I know that I'm in for at least 25 hours, and I'm like, what? A, where do I find the time? Oh yeah, 25 hours. Who has that? I need to spend all of that time in Final Fantasy 14. Dude, I got the I Final just... Fantasy 15 mount today, and I'm so it's a car because I'm a little tiny boy. I stand on the seat. How do I drive it? I stand on the seat. <laughs> My Don't you use feet. the magic of crystal energy to push the pedals, the pedals or something? How do I drive the car? Oh, I love it. It was lovely. Lucius Knox's Caleb came to my world and we battled Garuda together. It was lovely. It always sounds like you're speaking a different language. That's his name, like... Lucius Knox's Caleb. It sounds nice. Talk about Final <laughs> Fantasy XIV and Kingdom Hearts. I was listening well, to that... my friend Alvin nerd out <laughs> about Kingdom Hearts. After Kingdom Hearts players are lost. That's my D and D game Tuesday night six p.m. So I was listening to them nerd out about it. Y'all, these two motherfuckers were throwing out names like Zemnis. Yes. And, uh, Zemnis, Ansem, Zeonort, <laughs> Ro- yeah, Roxas. Zeonort. That's where they lost me. They were Zeno, like, Zeno, Nord. Zeno Nord. Wait, did, were Zeno they talking about people uh, getting Zeno. norded? Were they like, dude, got norded? Yes. yes. I was like, what the fuck are you? It was like a different language. I was so <laughs> angry at them. I was like, what are you talking about? Having like, played what? all the games, I still don't know what the fuck it means. And Trust like, me on okay, this. Yeah, Nothing's so explained. Got norded. And then they were trying. They were like, there's one character, Bronze, with like, 
and they were like trying to figure out which character it was. It's like, no, no, no. Did they say Aqua? Like, no. And then, and shit you not, this is what he says. He says, no, the guy that's like, dance, water, dance. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? What do you mean, dance, water, dance? <laughs> and he was like, oh, yeah, she would like dance, water, dance. And I'm like, D- I, I don't like dance, water, dance. I don't know what dance, water, dance is. Yeah. It is. Here's, here's what I'll say. The first Kingdom Hearts is like a fine, fun romp. It offers nothing yep. new. It is like yep. super entertaining. And for some reason, Final Fantasy characters are hanging with Disney characters. And Chip yep. and Dale are making like ships you can fly around in. It makes no fucking sense. You can sense. go it's fight beautiful. Sephiroth and that's all you want from it's any like super RPG. It's fun. Doesn't matter at all. It's lovely. And then at some point between the first game and the second game, they were like, and now to not make any sense. And then they made like eight other games on many different consoles that are all and connected. And if you didn't play them, you have no idea what's going on. And, and phones. So, yeah. And then they were like, and now to wait 15 years to make a third game. And that third game is going to not make any sense. We're going to remove all the Final Fantasy characters and only have you go through like, we're going to do Frozen, but it's going to be exactly Frozen. It isn't going to be like, I'm in the Lion King world, and we're having some fun, and we're Lion Kinging. No, it is literally like, and now for the scene in Frozen that you remember. Oh, and another scene you remember. And now another. It is the worst thing I've ever, whatever it is, Kingdom Hearts 3, all you know is at some point Mickey's like, Sora, you have to find the light in your heart to unlock the darkness within you. And you're like, what the fuck are you talking about, Mickey? Sora, Kingdom Hearts is in all of us. You're like, this, someone, Mickey Mouse is saying this shit. Mickey Mouse is like, oh boy, we've got to defeat Xehanort or else we, like, come on, Aqua and other guy. We've got to unlock Kingdom Hearts. You're like, what is that? It is insane. It's insane. And the fact that there's so many people who love these games and they're like, you don't get it. I mean, you don't get what it's funny. about. You're right. I only played the first one for a little while. The only other like Kingdom Hearts content that I have like taken in was Donkey's videos of him playing. Donkey's videos of Kingdom Hearts are priceless. Like, all I remember from the Kingdom Hearts three video is the clip of Donald Duck constantly walking around me like, this might be a good place to find some ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's just funny, man. I don't know. There's something Meanwhile, valuable Eeyore. there. There's, there's nothing about. There's, there, they added in Game Arts Three. Uh, Game Arts Three, they added a thing where you know how at Disneyland they're like hidden Mickey's. They're like, eff it, they're hidden Mickey's in this game now. So if you really want the top score, you have to look all over the map to find little tiny mouse ears, and it is. That's like in the first two hours of the game. Man, pixel hunting is the best part of a video game. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> extremely rewarding if i made video games i would make sure that you have to pixel hunt in all of them i'm just saying sometimes just let just let stuff be dead wait what so jesse what would like a good kingdom hearts be find the ginger <laughs> the a good kingdom hearts a good kingdom hearts was uh kingdom hearts one was like not serious at all it yeah. was literally like it was cute yeah, it's. I mean, it was it was it was maudlin in like, oh, yeah. your friends matter, and like everybody has like darkness inside of them. But yeah. with your friends, you can band together and yeah. you know be, defeat the darkness. Mm-hmm. And like also like here are these cool characters you recognize from other media franchises all talking together, and like they yeah. all look cooler than they looked in the franchise they were introduced in. Uh, and it's just like, oh, Pete, sweet. Pete did not look cooler. Who who's Pete? Pete from Goofy. Oh, Pete. Oh yeah. Okay, he right. Yeah, sure. Cool. They dressed him like a goober, and then he walked around with Maleficent, and she was like, "Like, come with me, Pete. Let's do evil." And he's like, "Okay." Oh, 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 sucked. That part <laughs> sucked. Yeah. But then it was like, "Oh hey, I'm a semi-famous person, and I'm voicing a Final Fantasy character. Crazy, isn't it?" And you were like, "It is crazy." Is Hi, that my name is Bass? Lance Bass. You never thought that I would be the voice of Sephiroth, but I am. Crazy. I love he travels so much. He does so many different yes. things. 
It's so he had, crazy. Did you guys watch that show, The Circle, on Netflix? His assistant mm-hmm. was on there, catfishing as him. I was going to point that out. And he just hosted, like, Bachelor in Paradise for, like, a couple episodes. I Can love go to space? how much he's just, like, doing whatever sounds fun to him. <laughs> I didn't know he did Kingdom yeah. Hearts. Let me just, all right, listen to this cast. Also this went is the to cast space. of Kingdom Hearts. It is Badonkers. This is who is in this. Oh, wait, that's the Japanese cast. Badonker Donks? It is what? crazy. Who this? U.S. English. Let's say English. It makes no sense to me that this is, this is like who they got to be in this. So, obviously, the main character is I See Dead People, Haley Joel Osment. Um, Riku yeah. was David Gallagher for some reason. Uh, okay. The, for some reason, very famous at the time. Not necessarily. I don't know if he's famous. Not Jesse McCartney was oh. uh, in that. Um, the, like, I where are these people? Oh, that's oh no, oh I, no. This is Kingdom Hearts three voice cast. That's not what yeah. I want. It's like yeah, the character of Aqua. No, no, that's garbage. Um. Hayden Penitary Penitary is Kyrie the 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 cheerleader saving the world Kyrie um Billy Zane was the bad guy yes Billy Zane was the bad guy crazy he's a good bad guy it's just it's crazy to me um I gotta get to the mo- I'm going through the Disney people and it's literally all the Disney people like you know Gilbert Godfrey was Yago you know like they use all the oh, Disney of course. Oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So I'm going through them, you know, the Disney people. And they, even the 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 people from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas was like all the Nightmare Before Christmas people. It's freaking wild. But yes. then Final Fantasy, you got all the Final Fantasy characters, right? So it's like all the, like, Mickey Mouse, the voice of Mickey Mouse. Then it's like Final Fantasy. David Boreanaz was Squall from Final Fantasy VIII, or Leon, as they <laughs> called him in this game. Okay. Christy Romano was Yuffie. Mandy Moore was Aerith. Mandy Moore. Mandy Moore. Crazy stuff. Someone in chat pointed that out, and I swear, I thought they were just memeing. I thought that was just a meme. No. What's even great? And then Lance Bass, straight up Severoth. Straight up. Didn't Mandy Moore do Tangled or whatever, though? She was like part of the Disney family. Wowie. Sure, sure. It's just wild to me that that's the case. And then Steve Burton was. What does Steve Burton do anymore? The voice actor for Cloud. That's it. He's just Cloud in every video game. (laughs) <laughs> that's amazing that's he's so just cloud in every work. game man Except for the good gig if you can get it yeah. yeah it feels it feels like square enix and and yeah they're, they're just gonna like keep making final fantasy sevens forever so might as well i are, work for I have skyrim a, i have a genuine question about steve burton dear steve burton what else have you done because according to your your profile this is his voice acting credits <clears throat> The City of Final Fantasy NT, Cloud Strife. World of Final Fantasy, Cloud Strife. Final Fantasy Explorers, Cloud Strife. Kingdom Hearts HD 2.5 Remix Edition, Cloud Strife. The City of 12 Final Fantasy, Cloud Strife. Kingdom Hearts Recoded, Cloud Strife. The City of Final Fantasy, Cloud Strife. Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories, Cloud Strife. Crisis Core, Cloud Strife. Dirt of Cerberus, Cloud Strife. Final Fantasy VII Diamond Children, Cloud Strife. That's it. That's it. That's all this man's done. Apparently. You know what he does? He does one of two things. One, he has like a normal job or just like hangs out and does these for fun because they keep hiring him. Two, he's a professional voice actor who does commercial work and he uses that one credit as like his like name to fame, like legitimizer, and it gets him a fuckload of VO work. I guess. I don't know. It's I bet it's one of those things. Tell us, Steve. <laughs> yeah, I would love to know. Maybe I feel like this. It might not show all of his credits. Steve, call in. Let's get Steve on the phone. Right. It probably, like, I don't think it would show. All I'm saying is, Brian Blessed was in the game? (laughs) What? (laughs) Gordon is alive? So, so like. That guy is a treasure. Now now that I've been in AAA for a little bit, I think that writers have one really cool job perk, which is, like, writing stuff and then like carefully manipulating and like selecting the voice actor that they've always wanted to work with whoever it might be to be like ah 
we're going to have Haley Joel Osmond be such and such in this in this game. And that's going to be amazing. No, that and shit then- is. I hired one a guy who used to do. He did the voice of Duke Nukem on like one of the games. I hired him to do VO for a commercial I was directing. And I was Absolutely. so excited. And I told everyone. <laughs> I was like, Guns oh, this guy did Duke Nukem. Listen to his voice. It was great. <laughs> I'm uh, I don't even know my lines. <laughs> Sora, you Sora. have to unlock the light within you to beat the darkness. And I'm all out of bubble gum. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I, look, I don't know what it is about about voice acting, but I'm also going to say that voice casters are lazy as shit. There I said it. It needs to be said. Voice directors? True. So lazy. Why? True. Because I don't care who you cast. But I hate when you cast a person and I know they have a range and it's always the same voice. Because they're like, and it's just, it's, you know, they cast this guy and the only voice you hear is just Matt Mercer. I mean, like, look, I think Matt's guilty. I don't think he's guilty of that. I think the casting is not Matt's. That's, Matt's not guilty that's of that Matt's at all. Problem. But, yeah, it's but, not his yeah. fault. He, he absolutely, yeah. I, I feel like he has definitely been invited to projects and been like, can you just sound like Matt Mercer? Well, same thing, same thing with I think the entire critical role cast, but more importantly, of course. with with many voice it always happens and it happens in waves. So like if you are, you know, a two thousands voice over video game person like me, where that's when you like you started to notice a lot of voices. At the time it was Steve Bloom like crazy. Every MFR was just like, can you just do Spike Spiegel? And he was like, all right. And same thing with Jennifer Hale. They were like, can you just do your voice? Like, do the Jennifer Hale voice? And that's, it sucks because I think it's, like, not very creative when it comes to the, like, production side of things. Because I know the voice, if you listen to the voice actors, they can do a bajillion voices. But everyone's like, in our mind, we wrote this character for you. To sound like you. Oh, yeah. Because no, we that's want you. lazy. That's, but that takes out all the fun, too. Like, the most fun oh, yeah. part of directing voice acting is, like, directing voice acting and, like, mm-hmm. directing inflections and pace and, like, changing it and making it exciting to listen to. Have you done that, Britt? Yeah. I used to work. Uh, I was a commercial director for, like, a year before I moved to L.A. So I just uh, wrote and directed, like, commercials for things. And then I'd have to hire VO people to do the VO for the commercials and then direct them over the phone. Like I'd have them on the phone and they'd be recording their voice and I'd be listening to them and then giving them notes and changing it. And then we'd use, you know, we'd give it to the editor and they'd cut it all together. The, the problem is that Super a lot of people cool. don't, don't have like, um, I don't want to say vision, but they don't want to take chances. I, I was doing a casting thing and the character was a princess who like – was living in the woods for a while. And uh, in my mind, it was like, oh, there's a roughness to her. Like, she's not a princess anymore. She used to be a princess, but now she's, she's like- a survivor. Yeah, now, and so there's like, in her voice, I want something that doesn't sound like a princess. And so I found this this woman's like, she nailed it in my mind. I was like, that's it. That's the voice that's so good. It's like a little goofy and a little fun. And there's like a ras- like a raspy thing to her voice. And she also has like kind of a lisp. I'm like, <gasps> I love how fun that is. It isn't, you know, what you would think of a princess. And everyone else in production was like, no, we want to go with this person. And her voice is like, oh, my. You know, like the princess voice. And I was like, this is why we can't have good things. It's harder to direct voice acting than people know. Like, Stephen, I'm sure you know this. Like, there's so many different ways to describe how a voice could sound and things you can do with it. Like, it's. It's harder than it it seems, and there's people like I would say I am like okay to mediocre at it, and there's some people who know exactly how to get what they need with the right it words. Seems but a lot so of people cool. don't know. They're like, just sound scary. I don't know, and then they listen. They're like, mm. and they don't they don't think it's right, but they don't know how to describe what is right, so they just go, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> I I hope I think that happens a lot. Like, <laughs> I hope bronze. I was that way with you. I hope I was good with you. I hope I was like, do this. No, do that. Because no, I, have I, wait, I wait, wait, like wait. excessive direction, I, which is weird because I think a lot of creators don't. But I, I like a lot of direction when even when I'm like doing a show like for a, like a because a lot of the edited shows I do chat, even like the, the they're they're scripted a little bit, um, mostly in like so like when I did the vampire game for Geek and Sundry because we're on a very tight schedule. Some of it is on rails. A lot of it's improv, but you still have, um, so some people, some shows, they don't hire a director from that. And I hate it. 
other shows do hire a director for that. And I love it because I love for the director to come in and let me know if this, something's taking too long um, or if, you know, we're going to we're actually going to cut all this anyway. So don't bother trying to, you know, like I love that. And I love for them to be like, can we make this spookier? Can we change our tone here? Can we do this here? Because then when you go back and look in the final edit, it looks really, really good. But well, because it allows you to not worry about all that shit and like just do what you're yeah. doing to your best ability and then count on the fact that the person will tell you whether you're going in the right direction or not. Yes. Right? Like, yes. Um, it's important I, to have someone like that yeah. so the performers yeah. can do the maximum of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And even with voiceover, I've done voiceover for projects that they never ended up using it. And I always felt like, well, if you had told me like what changes you needed to make, and sometimes it just doesn't work out, but yeah. like the voiceover I've done where they've kept it, it's the one where they gave me notes. So like when I don't get notes, I almost get like a slight anxiety if they're like, yeah, it's great. Cause I'm like, you don't need to save my feelings. I'm a professional. You can tell me what you need and I'll adjust it. And that I did the voiceover for TwitchCon um, yeah. with the whole like, you know, welcome to Twitch. I did that whole thing. That is a what two minute VO. I recorded that for over two hours. Yep. And I loved it though because it was a it was a long script, and we were getting notes back. They would send it to the team, and then the team would send it back, and then we send it to the team. The team would send it back. And one of the best notes I got was there's a part where there's clips playing in the background. You hear my voice going over like you know uh, from the happy moments to the sad to the wholesome, and then there's one that where somebody's like doing something crazy where I said to whatever's going on here and we got a note back that was like hey you're all done except this line it seems like she's kind of like making fun of this guy or she's like mocking him like do we want to come off that way and i was like no i don't <laughs> no i don't like i don't <laughs> no i don't um and so like having little notes like that it does make it take longer but i loved the final cut and i have that in my reel now so yeah, that's just, I don't know. It also increases like fun. trust and communication between mm -hmm. the performer and the crew, which is really important. And I found like you do, you have always, whenever I've directed you, always ask for notes. And like, there's times where you literally, I have nothing to improve upon. But I figured out, I was like, oh, if I actually specifically tell her like the shit she's doing well and why I don't have notes for her, that <laughs> seems to be helpful too. So I actually, I started doing that with other people because I did that with you. Because I was like, oh, because... <laughs> Cause I knew you were like, give me the notes. Like, I don't care. And I was like, I know you don't care. You're making me very happy. And I don't have anything that I want you to change right now. <laughs> like, and I was like, Oh, if yeah. I just explain why I don't have any, that actually seems to kind of have the same effect where you're like, okay, I understand your thought process mm -hmm. and we trust each other now. So it's like, even if you don't have notes, like there should just be a communication about what is working or what isn't yeah. right. Like, yeah. Like yeah. Giving giving feedback and receiving feedback are both such difficult skills. Yeah, they're really hard. You, I mean, this I think is also uh, true of photographers. I if you should know how to direct someone who's modeling. You, oh yeah, when I make Sean take pictures of me, it is. I'm like, I'm not hearing anything. Do I look good? Should I move? Do I turn yeah. my <laughs> yeah, because you need that. Like you can't see yeah. what they can see, right? So when you when you leave something and all the photos are horrible, it's not a good feeling because yeah. you know you don't look that way, you know. And it's like, God damn, why didn't you tell me to just move my chin down or that this angle wasn't working or to like move a little bit? Like you know, um, I think some people feel like, oh well, that's always up to the model, which like is the case some of the time where it's like, if you have a really strong model, they always look good or they know how to pose themselves. But if this is what you do for a living, then you better learn to model, like, or take good photos of like every person that sits in front of your camera. Cause if you take a horrible photo of Mindy Kaling, no one's gonna blame her. They're gonna blame you for taking a shitty photo. Like that's the, <laughs> so if she's yep. modeling like, it does. No one's going to go back and be like, wow, Mindy really sucks at modeling. They're just going to be like, wow, this guy took a really bad photo of Mindy Kaling. We've seen plenty of good ones. So clearly he's the common denominator and he sucks, you know, same thing with stylists. I think a mm -hmm. lot of stylists want to work with like tiny bodies, like size zero to two. And it's like, if you don't learn how to style different shapes and different sizes of people, no one's going to like that. You're not going to get clients. <laughs> you're you're gonna... not very good at your job, are you? 
It's, no, it's, yeah, you can't just style like tiny women. You have to know how to style everybody. And with that, they just do those jobs and they don't know. But we know what we're doing because what we're yes, doing. Yes, everyone here is an expert at their job and never needs no. Cycle. <laughs> never. Wait, are you being sarcastic, Stephen? I think Chad has a few notes for us. I am. I don't take notes. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't take notes. Jesse, I don't know. I just feel like there are some improvements we can make. I can make no improvements. Zero improvement. In fact, the best improvement were, would be for me not to improve at all. I thought you were going to say the best improvement would be for me not to stream at all. <laughs> some days, boy, I will tell you, I spent a week away from streaming and I came back like, I'm going to fucking stream all goddamn day. Oh, <laughs> I can't wait. It's, it's weird. It's weird because, uh, yeah, I've replaced physical love with the emotional love I get from strangers on the internet. And that's how I get through the day until I crash and I'm like, am I alone? And then I remember every Wednesday at whatever time the, we fucking start, <laughs> Sunfall Cycle. At 10 a.m. Every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And I am not alone. Here I am with four other souls devoid of life and i realized you you know 586 what? You know what? other there are other souls sad people too life. yeah there are other incredibly sad people and i can feast off of their sadness and thrive and uh like a like a emotional vampire <laughs> leech your emotions to wait you want to leech my sadness out of me so you can thrive i'm fine with that take it please i, <laughs> I don't, suck all the sadness i don't know what i'm talking about i went down a hole you take it i went down a hole and like <laughs> try to dig myself out with words but there was no Jesse words that could help. went down a hole trying to suck the sadness out of us and i was down it, there i like was down there sucking sadness and i couldn't get out hole. I was he didn't like, get enough good direction. He needs more notes. Yeah. Did you, look, did, all. I'm all about notes. <laughs> Tell me how you need it done. How can I suck the sadness out of you? I'll take all the notes. I think really Tell we need you, you to bottom out in the hole first before sucking the sadness out. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta I, hit that I'm bottom. I'm really eager. I'm very eager to suck the sadness. Like, I'm, I'll get in there. I will suck that sadness out. But I'm going to, you know, like, you know, I'm not going to be great at it. It's not something I do all the time. <laughs> so if you just want to, like, guide me, hold my hand a little. We can get through this together. Yeah. Right. You know what I want to get through together, Jesse? I want to get through this, uh, today's game of the Sunday. This, football. this conversation. I want to get through this conversation so we can get through the rest of this show. Um, I want to get through this uh, segue. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, keep going. You're, You're almost through. Keep going. You're through almost through. Right You're almost, you almost <laughs> dug your way out. Keep going. You were down there with me yeah. for a minute. You were like, I started talking. And I masterful. thought I could stop, but I didn't. And now really? I'm down masterful, here with you. Masterful, priceless. It's me looking over handled. at you with a noose around my neck, like first time. Yeah, that was you and I. That was yeah. We were you, there you can tell that Britt has been a professional producer for years and years. What the fuck are you talking about, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, all nothing. right, friends. Nothing. This is Bakwas, my guy. Sunfall cycle. We didn't even talk about Death Loop yet. Oh my God! I haven't played it. Your... I can't talk about it. I'm gonna have to make Death Loop references all through today's episode because that game is dope. I am in love. I'm in love with Death Loop. It's fantastic. They sent me this other game, cube, and I feel like if I solve it, a Cenobite will come. But what does the puzzle cube have to do with the game, Stephen? Uh, the game itself is kind of a big puzzle. Uh -huh. It's, it's, it's kind of like a big puzzle slash kind of like a Swiss watch. It's super cool. Do you, yeah. do you know much about it, Bronze? I do know a little bit. I play a little bit of it. Oh shit. <gasps> How far are you? <laughs> I got early access. So uh, I played it for a bit, but I haven't been able to like play the full release yet. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Streamer I've... privilege. I've I've like completed uh, a handful, like five objectives or something if like I'm that. I'm streamer privilege. You're streamer supremacy. Streamer <laughs> privilege. You're like streamer fascism. <laughs> if I'm privileged. Streamer fascism. You better that's be careful. Jesse. That's that's we're almost there. I think that exists already. I'm pretty sure I've seen some of that. Just go on live stream fails. Yeah, I've uh, I've seen some of that on Twitch. Yeah, it's there. 
Anyway, <laughs> you all look around the gardens of the moon. Leander standing there clutching his library book saloon perched on a rock, just gazing wistfully out over the horizon. And across the water of the giant lake, you see uh, three golden glowing words inscribed in the sky that read, break the loop. So what happened last time on the Sunfall Cycle? Six weeks ago? 12 weeks ago? When was last? Um... 825. Do we, do we get a short rest? Oh, well, you're on the moon, so you get a full rest. Yeah, we're, oh, we're... You get a long rest. Hmm. Planner, scope, planner scope was achieved. Uh, yep. We trogdored marshmallow into yes. beef mallow. Oh, yeah. Beef mallow. Uh, we got a tear, and we were thinking about traveling to the clockwork realm. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, we wanted to, con in general, we wanted to, I don't know if we talked to Aramon yet or not. Um, so you went, to. you went, you went to Iraman, and um, you were like, "We got the scope, hooray! Everything is good." And she was like, "Fantastic! Now I can help you get places. It's going to be awesome. See you next time." Because that's when the right. moon, sun exploded. Yeah. Yeah. And then we came back and we chased. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's his face? You know, you chased Iraman. Uh, Iraman. You chased uh, Leander all yeah, around the we tower. We chased Leander around, and uh, we were like, "Yo, we have questions." And he was like, "I'm gonna dodge all those." And then I was like, "What up, bro? Why you uh, working with someone else?" And he was like, "Girl, you work with who you can work with." And I was like, "I will break you." And he's like, <laughs> "I'd like to see you try." And then. Uh, we asked him a question. I don't remember what question it was that we asked him to give us information on. It was, mm -hmm. how does the planar scope work, basically? Great. How, how do planar scopes work? Um, yep. And yeah, and then the last thing we were going to do was um, go over all this fun stuff. And uh, did Aya level up already? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There, we go. there was some confusion about a very exciting new power that was from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Yeah, which yeah. is unfortunately not street legal here yeah, in the Sunfall Cycle. Yeah, and then Sun you said Falls no. <laughs> Nay. I remember that. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was Bronze being very excited for like twenty five minutes, and then you were like, no. "Thou wishest mm. to in, to include a cool ability in my game?" Nay. And then, uh, yeah, we were gonna buy some stuff, and I believe, look, I'm gonna say I talked everyone into it, but I think everyone just wants to go Clockwork Realm. Come on. Come oh, on. Yeah, I think we talked about that. Come yeah. on, that's going to be dope. Yeah, Clockwork Realm. I'm into it. I just don't know how to say the name. How it's to like say what? TikTok sticks? TikTok sticks. TikTok sticks? I can't say it. I'm not, I don't have the equipment to say it. Oh, yeah. You, you also TikTok. found out that Aya has, like, from binding... Um, the oh. worm Velzirathoth no, mm -mm. to her power. Hmm. She has begun the path of apotheosis. No, that's not a thing. Nope, that didn't happen. I can't I think, wait. I think you lied about it, I think, even. I mean, do you trust Leander? No. That's <laughs> Who trusts Leander? Nobody. <laughs> crazy guy, Steven. Literal trickster god over here. Crazy guy. Awesome. Okay. And I think we're gonna buy stuff. I think, but I don't know that we actually looked. Yes. So the um Deether has three magical artifacts that he has forged for you from the flux that's just lying around. Yummy. A Plus one breastplate, a ring of telekinesis, and a wand of the war mage. And I know that the ring requires attunement. Not sure about the other two. Well, um... The armor does... Wait, wait. A-L-M-N-O-P. The armor does not require attunement. And the wand of the war mage... Plus one to all spell attack rolls. Does Yummy. require attunement. Yes. I mean... Right. I remember pointing that out to Aya last session, but 
requiring a two minutes tricky because that's a plus one to your Eldritch Blast. How much? Which is nice. Yeah. How much flux do we have though? You have one hundred and two. Char nice. the Beast sounds yummy. I, I think right now, who are our lowest damage dealers? I know it's not me. Me. <laughs> Uh, Ankara. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I don't do that much. I kind of just eat, eat damage. Everyone but you, <laughs> like, we're all we all do like about twenty damage a turn, and you're doing like forty. Yeah. Maybe would it be wise to dump twenty arcane flux on the wand of the war mage specifically for Aya? Because I feel like that's really helpful. Hmm. And then do shard of the beast for hmm. Ankara. As like a hey, when you turn into something, here's a five d eight for like when we need it for some shit. Because I think it's one time, right? Yes. Honestly, like I could do that. I would. I would almost think we should give it to Eric because he always ends up like. I feel like you constantly end up losing hit points and like dying before the rest of us. But you do, like you kind of do similar to what I do. Like you eat damage and then you attack and you do like melee range yeah. fighting. So. Um, if I can turn to an animal, that's basically like giving myself that shard, right? Where if like like we can give you the shard, you won't have to die so fast. But you and I are kind of has a lot of HP. Today, so one of us could carry it and just use it whenever the first yeah. person needs it. Yeah, we don't have to decide who uses it yeah. right now. But grabbing that shared. I think it's a, like cool. a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, and the what do you think, Bronze? The one of the War Mage seems that, like it would be. Really yeah, it'll make Eldritch good. Blast hit more often. Yeah. They do have like uh, different invocations that boost that up a little bit. Okay. Um, I have be a true. Jade we can spend for that, so I can get rid of that on my thing. Cool. Cool. Hundred. But it has so to you're, boot you're, an you're, item. All right. So we, you're officially buying the Wand of the War Mage. Yes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I just paid um, the gems. I don't know who has flux. Uh, the party has flux. Okay. Uh, 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 plus one. Spell, and I'm going to keep the bracers of defense, Stephen, and I'm going to hang up my dark shard amulet for now. Okay. Um, do I have Yummy. a place on the moon that I can... Um. I so moon? I think like in Kara managed to make like a, mm -hmm. a special like mm -hmm. crystal abode for herself mm -hmm. and as soon as you ask like do i have a place to put stuff on the moon like as soon as you sort of think it and you sort of like look around like do i have mm -hmm. a place mm -hmm. you look around and there is one mm -hmm. and it's up to you to tell me what it looks like aya it's like a uh, yurt and inside there's a, it's like a hookah bar. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Does it have like pillows and rugs all over the floor? Like really yeah. lush. Yeah. And there's awesome. like a, I have like a cat, like a bookshelf in one corner and on it is like a mummified hand. And that's where I go and put the dark shard amulet. Nice. Red I love it. And the hand clutches it. When I put a place it there, it goes. And like, cute. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why that's, I think it's so cute. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Leander is hanging out near Kairos as he watches you walk in and he says, Look, sir, it looks pretty cool. Do you think do you think she'd let me uh let me come in? Looks pretty exclusive. Do you do you go in? Do you get to Don't go even in? Don't think about it, buddy. <laughs> oh, me? No, never. I would no, mm, certainly not. Mm. You do see uh the armorous bulldog is allowed in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, a variant of Armoros on the moon as well? Because oh, Armoros Armoros yeah. is in the tower with uh with with um. Oh, oh yeah, he stayed right? there. I forgot he stayed. Yeah. We didn't want him to get in danger. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. Cool. I'm thinking about getting that ring. I, I think I want that ring of protection. Or sorry, a ring of telekinesis. Do it. Uh, I might, I might want to grab that and swap out my. Uh, we no longer ring have of... arcane flux for it. It's true. Oh, yeah, we the ring of telekinesis is a hundred flux. 
Yep. Oh, that's fair. Bad. Yeah, but telekinesis at will. Um, that's one of those... <laughs> The, the speed runners of the Sunfall cycle are like, just keep randoming until you get Ring of Telekinesis, grab the box, <laughs> go to the side of the map, <laughs> hover to the side of the map, jump on the box four times, go to the map, kill the king. <laughs> is uh, there... It's a, it's a requirement. Is there stuff that we can... Uh, can we talk to our dear bird friend? Is there stuff I can just buy, buy? Zoom on yeah, my shield. There is stuff you can just buy, buy. Um... Buy? Bye bye. 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 Mains Hollow Show. So, yes, any of this that stuff you can totally just buy. Funny. I liked those packs for as long as they were useful for. Mm -hmm. Yep, but. We're using every the, every item is like irrelevant in 5e once yep. you're like level four <laughs> like as soon as you're yeah past level four it's like yeah our party is talk to us about these spells fun. you can see through time and space you can turn into a dragon random and random us up you no some longer spells. have to breathe randoming up you some spells let's go macros hmm. oh yeah the spells oh yes uh, good. So we have five of them, I think. One, yeah, two, gotcha three, game. four, five. Ooh, confusion level four. That's an S tier. And ice storm and fire shield. Oh, I didn't even. I, I stopped at the first one. <laughs> oh, well, this is a great pool. This is a good pack. Mm, how much do these cost? I think how it's fifty gold does, but... pieces per Probably level. Oh, it says on the tin. Yes. So uh, confusion is 200 gold, for example. Confusion's incredible. If it lands, it's basically one person is not doing anything. Right. It's kind of like when y'all were fighting Melkart. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like a, what is it? I have to look it up. It's like a, for some percentage chance, you just roll and you do nothing. Like, so sorry, you, were, you got confused. What was that, Jesse? Each of these are 200. The level four. Uh, it's it's the level times fifty. So cure wounds is level fifty. Sleet storm is level one. Is one hundred and fifty gold. Gotcha. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Tell me about this ice storm spell. Sarek like like it's saunters up water. to the to the to the big stupid crow, and in the flashiest. I'm going to say most Sarek, thank God I'm here to save all of you moment in your lives. You've never experienced oh. anything like this before. Sarek pulls out his bag of coins. And he's like, your hero has arrived. Don't worry, hero? Kairos. I've got this figured out. Hero? I'd like to purchase Arcane Flux, please. <laughs> Sark has 15,000 gold. <laughs> Almost 16,000. I like to buy yeah, I, gave you all my money. <laughs> I like to buy 18 flux, please. Main says flux? 18 flux, please. For my friend. 18. Here. 18. 9,000. That's fine. And I like flick the money at him like the rich son of a bitch I am. Let's yeah. like you have just like a stack of coins, just choo, 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 choo. Yeah. And I looked at Kairos and was like, you're welcome. Main's Ooh. two heads are like fighting over the coins. Mine, no, mine. You can now afford your ring. Enjoy. He just sort of goes. And, uh, really? And while, I, and while bro, I'm You made me a sandwich? And while I'm at it, I'll take it. You made me a fucking sandwich, bro? <laughs> Enjoy. Have your ring. Enjoy. Uh, and also, I'll purchase one Confusion, one Ice Storm, and one Fire Shield. Thanks. And, uh, you know, spread it around to the party. Uh, Amazing. You know, they can have whatever. I don't need it. So you bought 18 Arcane Flux. Yes. And then you spent 100. What do you mean? Like, no. on 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 the have... ring. I think so, because we, we spent yeah, we're have... we had wait, 102 wait, wait. originally. We spent yes. 20. That would yes, mean we need to 82 more right to now. get back to 100, yes? Yes. But then we're going to have to spend four more. For what? The uh, Shard of the Beast. 
You want to, you want a shot of the beast? Yeah. Take another two thousand off my tab. <laughs> Your money is always good here, Mr. Sarek. Oh, I'm aware. Uh, hey, before, Don't worry. Hang on, hang on. Before before you before you we get super, what? super you generous just owe with me this one, arcane pal. Block. What well, I can't I still can't buy the ring, dude. Why can't <laughs> that's, you buy so the ring? That's why hang on. Hold on. Because why I'm broke. Well, how much is the I have ring? twenty Hold I have, on. How much I have is the nearly ring? three thousand. Oh sweet boy. I, I have nearly three thousand. Oh sweet boy. <laughs> Uh, and I have don't worry, only Daddy one will gem, buy it for you. Don't which worry. is to don't, revive somebody. Kairos, don't worry. Just when the time big... comes. I when feel like you're about to ask for his voice in a seashell right now. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I has been asking a lot of questions. And when the time comes, I hope you remember who bought you this ring and all these things. Thanks, pal. Yeah. Wow, all right. Yeah. I spend another wow. 7,500 gold. I don't buy the, the spell icons. You, Instead, I'll spend 7,500 gold to get this man. Why don't you buy the ring? Hold on. Why don't you just use the ring? No, you it's all right. You can use the ring. I don't even gold. need it. I don't need the ring. Sorry. You poison resist. You a bunch of gold resist. from one of his thievings. What do you Sorry, mean? 7,500 bucks. You just secreted away like 10,000 gold that he didn't tell Kairos, you all about. <laughs> Kairos, buddy. Just take it. It's fine. I'm here for you. I don't care. I'm getting high in my tent. In my yurt. I don't I'm care. with yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> I am. You it's just your, us. Is your yurt like across from my crystal garden so we can oh, like yeah. smoke and like hang out in our little yurt I garden? Don't... It's yeah. just us Leander is 100% house. sitting on like the balcony of the second floor of the White Tower, like looking down at you, like tearing strips out of his book and like coiling them up and then like putting them in a pipe and trying to smoke them. <laughs> and he like inhales once and then like gasps coughing for three minutes and then like brings it back up and takes another puff. <laughs> you make me feel bad for Leander Stephen. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, uh, Marshmallow is just like floating easily through the updrafts of the hookahs. He has arms now, right? He does. He has arms and also like dragon wings, like two big muscle arms, right? Yeah, he's got he's got muscular arms and legs mm -hmm. and also wings, but not like humanoid ones. No, oh no, they're like one literally humanoid they're just human one human arm, off one the humanoid side. arm and consummate V's. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> consummate V's. Consummate V's. Yeah, just one really buff human arm and little tiny legs. <laughs> And he's like shaped like Make a, him a little wingling dragon. Yeah, like, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, Kairos. I've got it. Paid for already. Uh, I give you all my money. I have 87 gold left. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so hang on. Dude. You had you had 15,000 gold, right? Yes. I don't think 9,000 plus 7,500 adds on, up to 15. Hold on, hold on, hold on, I have... hold on, hold on. We have other we have other things that we can get rid of. Don't worry. Oh my god! I mean, I can put some of my money towards this. You know? Yeah. You're not, that's what alone. I figured. That's what I figured you would do. Don't worry. So like, I can okay. just I'll just drop all of my platinum. So that's seventeen two wait one seven seven zero zero. So like. You spent nine thousand plus seventy five hundred is Which would be sixteen fifty sixteen five sixteen yeah. five yeah. So that's you got twelve hundred gold left over. Accounting. <laughs> yeah, this but, is and I'll just keep like my, I'll just keep literally what I do at my day job. I'll just keep my eighty seven gold. You can keep the rest of, of what's left, Kairos. Don't worry. Okay. okay. So uh, Kairos has one uh, one thirteen. Wait, one thousand one hundred and thirteen gold. And uh, uh, Sarek has 87. That's fine by me. Enjoy the ring, pal. All right. I meditate so I tune it so that I can start lifting stuff with my mind. So if I understand correctly, we've got a ring of telekinesis. We've got a wand of the war mage. We've got no spell icons. Correct. And we don't have the shard of the beast. We have two Kay. other people in our party that could buy them if they wanted to, but right now, us best friends, we've are we're taken care of. Cool, that's awesome. I had forgotten from forever ago 
that I had allowed you to buy Arcane Flux with money. And I'm so glad that at last it has paid off being on the list. <laughs> awesome. Main just like looks at you with an adoring trio of eyes, just like looking at you and just like mine. That's right, pal. There's more of that where that came from, if you want it, but not now, right. unfortunately. Too full. Steven, yes. um, when I have finally finished attuning to the ring, I would like to flip over a table and Excellent. begin to lift it and then sit on it and While see if you're it can support it? my body weight. Let's see. Okay. L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S-T. T. Lee Kinesis. Does this work? And then can I begin to move it and surf on it? Telekinesis, fifth level transmutation, casting time one action, range 60 feet. Duration, concentration, up to 10 minutes. You gain the ability to move or manipulate creatures or objects by thought. When you cast the spell and as your action, each round for the duration, you can exert your will on one creature or object that you can see within range, causing the appropriate effect below. Now, I'm pretty sure that the ring of telekinesis only affects objects which are not carried or worn, right? Right, and that's what I mean. Being on the table, does the logic of the world dictate that it is being carried or worn by, my, so, by virtue of me being on it? If you are on a table, you are very clearly not carrying the table. Right. If you are on a table, you are very clearly not wearing a table. So let's okay. see what telekinesis has to say about objects. Yeah. Uh, you can affect the I, same I target round after round or choose a new one at any time. If you switch targets, the prior target is no longer affected by the spell. Object. You can try to move an object that weighs up to 1,000 pounds. If the object isn't being worn or carried, you can automatically move it up to 30 feet in any direction, but not beyond the 60-foot range of the spell. If the object is being worn or carried, you ignore blah, 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 blah. You can exert fine control on objects with your telekinetic grip, such as manipulating a simple tool, opening a door or a container, stowing or retrieving an item from an open container, or pouring the contents from a vial. So can I fly? The DM <laughs> needs to figure out whether or not there's going to be some DM bullshit here. There's some static yeah. shock stuff. That's what I, that's what I want to do. <laughs> do you, now, you, now you know why I want the ring. Yeah. <laughs> if, if anyone can use it well, I figure it's you. So. Um, all right, Eric. You look around, you find yourself a table in Deether's like chamber where yeah. the forge is, and you thrust out a hand, and with a word of command, the table rises into the air. It rotates, and all the stuff slides off of it and clatters to the floor, and Deether says, Hey, watch what you're lifting. And then Tim Tam Tom says, Oh, the table exudes a, a flaming tendril out in its direction. Um, you set the table back down you sit up on the table you exert your mental will and you begin rising into the air it's working <laughs> Tim Tam Tom says now this is pod racing <laughs> I don't, no one understands that reference why do you keep what? using it what is, pod <laughs> what, do you, what is a pod race is it a it sun sound thing like a pod race does sound like something a spa a star squid of fire yeah. would actually you do. see you see golden words inscribed over the forge. What is pod racing? <laughs> no one knows. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to ask Leander that. What is pod racing, dude? <laughs> what is pod racing? <laughs> Please look it up. <laughs> He's done coughing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, this will be handy. Yeah, awesome. You 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 go floating right. around. I said it. Yeah, your I can only go thirty table. <laughs> I can only go thirty feet, but I I will I will I will set it back down. But this has great applications in in the the destroyed world. Yeah. 
can I get y'all's input? On I could create bridges. Mm -hmm. Um, of course you oh. can. But friends, uh, so since I can't use that cool thing, because Stephen hates warlocks. Stephen is racist <laughs> against warlocks. I heard that about Stephen. I That's what they say about me. Um, for my fifth Eldritch inv invocation, which one do y'all think would be the most useful? I can do, uh, Grasp of Hadar, where every time I smack something with an Eldritch Blast, I can pull it to me, which might be cool. Uh, or I was thinking maybe Tomb of Levistus as a reaction, I can encase myself in ice and gain 100 temp hit points. And I can't move, but yeah, because I think it's 10 temporary hit points for each level of Warlock, which I'm level 10 now. Amazing. So I, would, I wouldn't be able to take any actions, but I could just. <laughs> All right, like, hang on. Double your hit points. That sounds really cool, but I have to ask, is that from the Xanathar's Guide to Everything? It is from Xanathar's. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> so I could yes. like, just save myself. Or um, afterwards, I would be. I think the block is vulnerable to fire damage and stuff. But like, I could just chill. Literally, you just have World of Warcraft ice block power. Yeah, that's literally what it is. I would be, and that's kind of where I was like, oh, like Frost Mage style, just be and just. No, I don't like this. I don't. Um, mm, I think you did it all for the pun, and frankly, I I'm not gonna stand for it. I think you chose this. That's pretty good. Literally, so you could just make an ice joke. Yeah. And uh, it was too good, and I'm were, upset. I'm I, upset. I thought you were cool with ice jokes. No. What, no, you will find a frosty reception here. I need you all to chill out. <laughs> this is, you know. What is, um, what, are, what are you comparing this ice block to? Like, what, what are your other options? Um, oh, I could have one where I just have dark vision since I'm the only person in the party who doesn't have it. <laughs> I think there's another cool thing. I have to see what book it's from where I can see through walls. Oh, like, that, that would be, could be useful. Yeah, it's like Yummy. one minute concentration and I can see through walls, but they'll, they're like ghosts or whatever. But I can like kind of roughly tell where everything is. Oh, like literally like the, that uh, stealth sense vision. Yeah. you know in any any game yeah um, like, i would be joel from the last yeah game, where i like do this mm -hmm. and i can like <laughs> yeah see the shot hang on hang on does that allow does that allow you to cast spells at them because you can see them i don't know if does I that count as having line of sight yeah that's what i mean is that my spells require line of sight except for i think eldritch blast the rest of them mm. do you still I have the cloak cast. I do. Oh, it doesn't have line of sight. But... So I could theoretically pull a nightcrawler, see where they are, and then go. Foom, foom, and yeah. Then, like, them. Yeah. That's... Um, ice block though is ice block, and like it's always going to be good. Yeah. But seeing through walls and finding like heartbeats and stuff like that also seems pretty good. That's that's a tough call. Whatever, however you want to spec, that sounds real good. <laughs> Whatever you want, Bronze, we trust you. Well, yeah. one one's clearly more for combat and one's more for you like utility and like maybe stopping a combat, right? I mean, if one one might st uh preclude uh not having to ice block because you defeat a fight before it even began. I do have you know? a question about cuz I don't know shit about warlock spells, but it seems to me that as we're as we've been playing for 12,000 episodes, your biggest problem is that every time we fight, if we don't have a rest immediately afterwards, you have no like no spell slots left, you have nothing to use, and I it does using an ice block take up a spell slot of some sort. No, so it's like a bonus thing? Yeah, it's just a reaction. Hmm. It's one of the Warlock Eldritch invocations, right? Yeah, yeah so I guess it, I mean, like whatever you think you'd use best then. Or any, or at least in my mind, anything that would mitigate the fact that like when we get out of combat, you have a huge downtime. I don't know if there's anything like that that can help. But usually it's yeah. like, all right, let's get into combat. And you're like, oh, shit, I have nothing. <laughs> and I have yeah. no idea. Like, I don't rest. know how to fix that. Yeah, The goggles. <laughs> yeah, because like, uh, when I take damage, normally as a reaction, I can 
cast uh, Hellish Rebuke, which is one of my higher damaging spells, but I only have two spell slots. So this would allow me to, I have like a couple tricks, right? Cause I have like that weird thing where I can, as a reaction, impose disadvantage. And that then if the spell misses or if I get advantage against them, but once those two things are up, I don't really have that much, especially if I don't have any charges on my Raven cloak to get out of damage. So mm. if I'm, if I'm getting hit, I can kind of as a reaction, cast it and hopefully not yeah. die. Um, dude, ice block, ice block. That's yeah, the strategy. Might as well do ice block then. Yeah. I think ice block's a good idea too. Cause we're going to like tick tocks or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Um, the taste right? of your lips are toxic. Is That'll that probably be called. more useful than, like, how many walls are there? Like, I don't know. Can I ask you a question? Can you I just, know like, it's tick socks, ticks. Can I just really quickly ask you a question about all of this? How thick and powerful is the ice block? Is it like, like, just imagine we're in a gear world and you become an ice block and then someone with telekinesis throws you in between the gears shutting down the system and we f some stuff up just i mean that like, that could happen so it does say you gain 10 temporary hit points per warlock level so that is 100 hit points right steven yes yeah uh which takes it's impressively power. thick and and very yeah. powerful think about no how thick and powerful that would be when you slam it in the, you, you get it between the gears and the, so you use your mind powers Whoop up, right through the gears, it stops the system. And then, like, the boss we're fighting was like, I am Mechanotroid, the mechanical robot boss. And he's like, oh, no, shutting down. And we're like, yoink, stole your tear, bitch. Think about the possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that will be amazing. Well, the, the big Pretty thing sweet. is, with the tomb, it basically gives you know, Kairos and Ankara a chance to heal me versus like what it is now where. Yeah. If you've got like three hit points left and you get targeted, then you're just I like, just boom, hundred hit points. And then I go down and yeah. then they have to like pop me. So it's like this, yeah. way, it's a stop gap. You guys can like choose, wait a couple turns to like heal me versus just like more dots. I'm dead. That's now. true. Yeah. Cause one of us is always like, Oh, I'm going to run over to brass. <laughs> yeah. Like true. having, having like a chance to do that where I'm stabilized. And so how much, how much, what's the maximum falling damage in fifth edition? I think it's 10 D six, 20 D six, 20 D six. So that's yeah. an average of 60 and a maximum of 120. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got someone who could just fly a block of ice up to, up to um, terminal velocity altitude. Ah, uh, I we don't though. I can't ta I can't cast it on people. No, no, no. But you can cast it on a table, which you and the oh, yes, of ice are true. standing on. Yes, and then I can just rotate the table. Okay, hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. You know, like flipping a penny from the Empire State Building. What if we just did that with me on top of this Emperor man's head, on top of sexy Jason Momoa King Man? What if we just dropped the block of ice on him and it would just went through his whole body and turned him into jello? And that's how we win the game. What was his name? Agamemnon? <laughs> Agamemnon. King Agamemnon. Agamemnon. <laughs> his king Agamemnon. Agamemnon. <laughs> Agamemnon. I do appreciate it, but uh he's the he's the Greek. I mean, well, here's the thing. He, is he Good technically news. Greek? Good news, everyone. Yeah. The whole Agamemnon like thing will work right? itself out. All we have to do is just wait. Yeah, but he's from like the, the other islands that itself. aren't Greek. Yeah. He's also not Troy. Don't he worry. Just, Whatever. The dude the who screws boss. over um, uh, Achilles. That's Did fine, but then that? he gets taken care of. It's fine. Yeah, that's true. That's true, he does. By just like dropping a block of ice on him. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Think about the possibilities. <laughs> and then and then when you land, you can go, Ice to see you. And then we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should have called yeah, it ice fall. <laughs> Wait, what? Should have called it ice well fall. instead of the sunfall cycle. It's the ice fall cycle. The, the snowfall cycle, Stephen. <laughs> the snowfall cycle. 
You already it's had the there. Right that's right the, that's the Christmas episode, Jesse. I know we used it already. The fact that you're like the ice fall cycle is insane. The <gasps> snowfall cycle was right there. We used it. I like ice fall. <laughs> it's clunky and doesn't sound right. It, it's perfect. It's definitely like a German made RPG for sure. <laughs> for sure. Icefall coming this summer. Like what? Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're doing that. Yeah, yes. <laughs> There's oh. An entire sheet for you to track your chalet in Icefall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Our next campaign, can we have a chalet, Steven? <laughs> we have to. I feel and like turtlenecks. Our game should be like a 80s themed game where we're yeah. like a slasher, a horror slasher thing. Are we going to do, uh, whatchamacallit, what's that thing called? Tales from the Loop? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Oh, yeah. Win. You should run us in Tales through the, from the Loop in like a Until Dawn style game. We're all just a bunch of kids at our chalet. In the Austrian Alps, our chalet. Awesome. Huh. <laughs> being attacked by the Yeti or but the Krampus. Eric there it has is. Has to be the uh, Eric has to be like the the ski instructor. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. His hair is like, like in little sporty, braids. On yeah, uh, sporty ski little beanie. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I demand yeah. to be the rich kid whose dad owns the mountain. Chaz, I'm Chas in T2C slopes. Chaz Chasington. Chaz Chasington doesn't give it. It's like, come on, let's get out of here, gang. We've got stuff to do. Like, you get to drunk. Like on the mountain we've and got powder to shred. Take your skis off and like leave them there and like yeah. throw your poles behind you and walk into the yeah. into the little lodge. Get and then like broski. later, later the pole that's like stuck in the snow pointing up is me. like what kills somebody because they like fall off the deck and they <laughs> just straight yeah. through the pole. My own hubris. Amazing. Oh no. Hoisted by my own petard. <laughs> it's like sticking. <laughs> oh, dear. I love Chaz. He's great. I killed myself. I oh, no. I feel like I would be a mountain lesbian, just like with a turtleneck and like Catherine Hepburn style. Like, I've got a strong constitution. We're going to find Everyone's out coming. who's doing all these murders. Why do we all have these acts? <laughs> we just got to get to my Subaru. We'll be fine. Yeah. Right. Got four wheel drive. Guy. My Forester. I have an amazing blanket I purchased from REI with my membership card. It's where I oh go to pick up women. You know. Membership cards are for plebs. <laughs> Please, <laughs> only membership jackets for this man. Yeah. Silence, Chaz. I get more box than you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you keep moving out of your ex girlfriend's houses. Because <laughs> the box. Oh, that was pretty good. <laughs> you need the. Because you have all the boxes. I know, I know. That's pretty good. Come on, gang. And my, like, five friends that are all named something that starts with a C-H. Like Chez and Chadwick. Chip. Chip. Chazzy. Yeah. And they're Charity. all like. Yeah. Sherrington. <laughs> Let's go, boys. And they all, we all walk out together all like. Yeah. And for some reason, there is one blonde woman with us. Is she dating one of us? Nobody knows. But she's just with us. And she's her name's Svetlana. Yeah, she's yeah, 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 yeah. Can I be like the snowboarder? Like, oh, <laughs> go, guys. First off, you 100% can. Guys, come on. If you do that <laughs> voice the entire time. Everybody, but guess this what? More power thing. for us. <laughs> we have this to entire keep aside. Dog, Brit. You have to have a dog yeah. and just be our shaggy character. <laughs> get, off, get off the mountain, you hoodlum. I'm going to have a wiener dog that I snowboard with in my backpack. Yes. You're, you're scaring away the customers. Get off the mountain, you drug addict. The customers, I have my own customers. I'm obviously the weed dealer on this mountain, too. <laughs> That's the biggest I'm problem. You. I'm part of the economy up here. My father will hear of this. <laughs> Let's like go, yes, gang. Buys weed from me. <laughs> I like how we all just made our characters. <laughs> that's character creation shorted. Done. All right, Stephen. Having a session zero mid session. Yeah. <laughs> sounds about right. That sounds about right. Now just go make. Oh. It. Because you're smart, you're a writer, so just go make it, and we're done. I can't wait till we all change. Because well, you said chalet as an offhand started. comment. Yeah, I mean, so so you've got two stats. One is chalet, and one is ice. And it's like whenever you want to do something comforting, cool, or fun, you have to roll under your chalet. 
Mm -hmm. And anytime you're trying to avoid danger or like evade horror, you have to roll under your ice. You're just, yeah, just, yeah. This is uh, an amazing idea. This is the best idea you've ever had, honestly. In all your years, this is it. This is the one. That's, been- by the way, Chad, that's lasers and feelings uh, is the system that I'm referring to here. Uh, and it's a fantastic. Until now, but this. The, the lightest possible system for running a role playing game ever. And it's fantastic. <laughs> Ooh, I need to look that up. I think it's lasers and feelings, right? It says, yeah. I mean, I just. Yeah. John Harper's game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've, you've got, you've got like two stats. One is lasers and one is feelings and, and it, it, that like they add up to six and you can like move points from lasers to feelings or vice versa. And if you're always trying to roll under your, your lasers or your feelings on a six sided die in order to do stuff, it's super cool. Yeah. This looks awesome. Oh, Anyway. Friends, I think that it is time for us to take a five-minute break and hash out the rest of this new game that we'll start playing next episode. <laughs> and when we come back, we can see the conclusion Shall of lasers today's adventures. <laughs> oh we can see the conclusions lasers? of today's, today's uh, episode in the, the Shadow Realm of Tixoxtix. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, we'll be back in hot oh, sec. Oh, oh. Hang tight. See you then. Boop. Boop. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Sunfall Cycle. Boop, 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 boop. Here we yeah. go. <laughs> I heard Steven to, talking about Warhammer. And, uh, to answer Warhammer. one of you who may have or may not have asked a question, hmm. yes, but I don't want you to have to pay shipping. No, True. No I, no, I got it. I got it. Don't worry. You'd be doing me a favor. I. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you know. I thought, I, we were, I, I thought that we were going to. It's fine. It's fine, Bronze. It's it's okay. Thought we were gonna do more, but like it's cool if you want. We should we should all we should get get the yeah. trio together. No, it's fine. I was thinking it's fine. About, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's all right. I was thinking about doing Stormcast Eternals and trying to make like a, a, a Kairos Legion kind of thing. As a Stormcast as a Eternals are super cool, and they're definitely Kairos. Yeah. So all right. Yeah. There's and and would, and if you do I it, Eric, I will not. I will. Money. I will play Age of Sigmar with you. I will spend the extra forty dollars, like forty dollars, on the Ryanair for my extra carry on, so it's my army, and come visit you and play you. Yes, we <laughs> we can throw down some Age of Sigmar together. Yeah, sounds we fun. We can stream it, bro, dude. No, okay. we need you content. need like seven content. webcams. Content. And- content. content, it's content. content. Everything's content. Everything's content. <laughs> Monetize it. It doesn't exist if it's not monetized. Our friendship yeah. is so profitable for my personal brand. <laughs> oh my god, it's funny and sad because it's so true. Well, oh god, modern real, life is hard. Look at Jesse's face. Like he just, when we talked, <laughs> <laughs> I saw something inside him die when we were like, Monet- <laughs> "Monetize your friendship." He was like, uh, "I can't tell when- you how many people I don't see because all they do is content." And that's it. And they don't do yeah. anything else. And it's like so depressing. Very healthy. So depressing. Yep. yep. It's supposed to be a fun conversation. I'm it's not kidding. fun. We're it sucks. It sucks that no one understands how to have fun anymore. They don't. Yeah. I understand. And it's playing Age of Sigmar. Agreed. Look, agreed. All right, friends. <laughs> what are we doing? Where are we? We're smoking hookahs in a yurt, yep. and what's the levitating plan? a desk? Levitating a nope. desk, table. What's that? Yeah, yeah. Are we done here? Did we do it? <laughs> I think I think we're ready to go into the uh, into Should the pool again. You know, play <laughs> our last thirty minutes. Um, we're gonna let's go. I think it's a bit of a journey to get there, but you know. So I, I think that the path, which you've traveled quite readily by now, is you return to the barricade camp and uh, stealthily sneak your way around the tents and and collapsed uh, wagons and stuff to avoid Praetorio, who's wandering back and forth going, and waving his little toy sword back and forth. Um, and then you you walk back down the, the path with the... Uh, statues up on top that are all destroyed you walk into the uh the 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 barbican um 
downstairs uh, into the like blood ooze chamber and then through the darkling mirror into the the uh, Turim Arcanum where um, Iriman sits on the top floor with Armros. Does that sound about right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Awesome. Cool. So yeah, you uh, take a trek and make it to Iraman fairly quickly. She's sitting on a chair, mm -hmm. uh, reading a massive tome, smoking a pipe, uh, and Armrose is, is like laid across her feet heavily and just like flopped on his side, snoring. Uh, yeah, I, I kick open the door with great pomp and flair and kind of disturb this very cute scene, the Studio Ghibli-esque scene. Yeah. Like trip over a stack of books. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit, hey, why is this here? Anyways, hey, Irman, what's up? I like Armrose. Armrose, Armrose opens an eye and then goes <laughs> and closes it again. Aw, I, p I pick him up once again, uh, Howl's Moving Castle style. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like, like just a just a massive amount of yeah. dog just hanging down below your arms. Yeah. Bong dog. Yeah. And uh kind of pace back and forth awkwardly with him hanging, rubbing my face against the top of his head. And I'm like, <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. We got the housing lens and we got the coordinates to go to six uh six tock tick tocks six tick tock six. Tick tock six. Tick tock stick. That's the best I'm gonna do. Um <laughs> And yeah, we're gonna have you take us there, and then maybe we'll figure out a way to manipulate the full of time and undo the horrible hellscape you've trapped us in. Yeah, yeah, sound good, sound good. Okay, <laughs> get up, come on, get up. And I like nudge her with my foot while still carrying arm around. <laughs> <laughs> she she pours a cup of tea, and like the camera lingers on the spout of the teapot as like a big bubble of tea forms at the spout, and then bursts and pours forth into the glass with like steam pouring up from it. Yeah, and she takes a sip. Ah, ta, 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 ta. it's hot. Yes, yes. You wanted to use the the planar scope then that to go to TikTok stick. TikTok sticks. No. The shadow realm of TikTok sticks. Ticks, ticks, tick, tick, yeah, tick sock I, sticks. I show I show on my phone. I'm I'm already checked in. <laughs> Flights. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, Armoros, you're cleared for pre-boarding. Please, uh, <laughs> to the front of the line. Um, now boarding, uh, not, premium not you. passengers. He, <laughs> she points at, 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 uh, at, at Sarek, and she says, you've been randomly selected for, for screening. What does that mean, randomly selected? I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> it's completely random, sir. There's nothing we can do about it. Please step over this way. Um, Is this real? Are you, are you joshing me? She says, I have the scope set up on the roof, ready to go. Well, do you know how to do you know how to use it? Because that's the one thing we could not get a straight answer from my patron for. I'm okay from that face, I'm gonna say I'm assuming yes. Darling, I designed it. Did we know that? Ooh, she got you. Did we know that? <laughs> I didn't Good I think it was one, good alluded one, to. I knew that. I was just asking because the armor That's a trick question. Used. And I like <laughs> move his jowls, and I'm like, armor is <laughs> still asleep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a big bubble out of one of his nostrils, just expanding and contracting. Um, what are you feeding him? He's so heavy now. She smiles and says, "He is quite the dumb boy." Please. Come this way. And then she pushes open the door to the staircase that leads to the top of the tower. I plop him down in front of the fireplace and tuck him in. And then nice. uh, I follow her. Uh, you tuck him in. And um, uh, as as we see the four of you leave and the door close shut, Armoros opens one eye and then like sniffs at the, the blanket and then like grabs it in his mouth. And then just pulls the whole thing up over him and curls up into a ball. So it's just a ball under a blanket. Ah, to be retired adventure dogs. <laughs> <laughs> On the roof, 
there is a, a large makeshift like tripod contraption. It's like 10 feet across, right? It's quite large and, and uh, surprisingly complex. It's not just like, here's three sticks sort of shoved up against this thing. It's actually, there's like pistons and mechanical wheels and gears and like belts and shit um, that, that Iraman has, has managed to cobble together and, and construct herself. And um, in the center of it is this massive, you know, 10 foot long, uh, like telescopic body. And at the close end, the small end is the viewing lens sort of like suspended in its suspensor array at the, at the base of this, this uh, construction. She looks at the four of you and she says, now I can probably use this to send you anywhere you'd like to go if you have instructions for how to get there. Yeah, okay, so we need to align the secondary phalange with uh, uh, Venus. And uh, not gonna lie, I read that as something else for a second. And then uh, we need to put a perfect square on the viewing lens in blood. I slice my hand open and try. Oh my God. And, blood? Yeah, yeah. and then we got a, uh, does anybody have any flux? I went through my supply. I haven't been rationing myself very well lately. Looks at my ring. <laughs> Looks back. Yeah, don't we have collective? Didn't we spend all of our collective flux? Oh, whoops. We did spend all our flux. Does it require flux to activate? <laughs> you know what? I'll be right back. I go all the way downstairs to the darkling mirror. Yeah. Pop through and see if there's a rift. Oh shit, there was a rift when you came through this time. No, okay, so, wait, 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 so, wait, 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 wait. With, with a destination in mind. Remember, we said if you go in the desert, if you go in the mirror without a destination, it's bad. Oh, I am. I haven't. I'm gonna be honest. Well, wouldn't we have there. taken? We would have taken. One yeah, you already took one. a mirror to, on oh. your way here. So yeah. yeah. Oh let's, yeah. Okay, let's cool. see what you get. Uh, you got eleven arcane flux okay, from going enough. through the mirror. That's enough. So I say, oh yeah, wait, never mind. I uh, I have this right here, um, and I put four in the. <clears throat> wait, where, where do I deposit it? Um, hang on, let me look at this. What the? The plan of scoop. I also don't know how to align the secondary phalange. I would tell uh, Iramon to do that. The plan of scoop. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yes. So, so as soon as you say, yeah, we've got to align the secondary phalange with Venus. She just like goes over to the other side and like flips a little dial on the side of the, the, the scope housing. Yeah. You inscribe the perfect square on the viewing lens. You deposit our four arcane flux into like the large open tubular end. Thunk. Uh, and then she like looks over your notes of like the command word. And she says, this is a very strange command, but I can do this for you. Are you ready? Go stand at the small end, the four of you. you. You'll want to be quite close together and make sure that your arms and legs are tucked in. You wouldn't want to leave anything behind. Hmm. Can't put our hands up and go, woo! No, no woo. Gotcha. Hmm. All right, I, I adjust my helmet so it's not as tiny on top of my head. <laughs> I grab marshmallow in my lap because he's an idiot. It's true. true. I just grab him. Like, I fit in perfectly. Wing or something. Dum dum. She says, "Here goes," and then she shouts, "Function X F X." There's a massive crack of lightning as a bolt of electricity shoots out of the clear sky and smashes into the planar scope. There are all sorts of like runes that you had never seen etched into the surface of the viewing of the of the 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 scope housing that just flare bright blue just ascending from the base of the scope up to the the wider end of it. Um, blue fire begins shooting out the the far end of it and then and have you ever seen like that thing where um you drop a lit match into like a big jug that you poured like one drop of gasoline into what 
Mm-hmm. This is like a science experiment that sometimes you can go look it up on, on YouTube. You'll see like science video, like match jug gasoline. Like you'll see it. So the deal is you, you pour like one drop you of gasoline of a- into a large, like it's like one of those like big water jugs that you put into a water dispenser machine, right? A water cooler. Oh, um, and yeah, you yeah. roll it all around so that all of the vapors like just infuse the 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 interior of the jug. You can drop a match in, and you can see the fire like like burning its way deeper and deeper into the jug from from the clear, wow. clear sides of the jug. It's super cool. My physics teacher in high school told us in high school that he used to do that, but he had a problem once where one of the jugs the was war. cracked. It was a it was a glass jug, and so the fire went. <laughs> straight over to the crack in the jug and then the jug exploded. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like... <laughs> and so he doesn't do that anymore, but um, you can absolutely go look it up online. Don't do it at home kids, but it looks super cool. Anyway, that's what this fire looks like burning down the tube towards the, towards the lens Ooh. that, uh, and like the, the, the perfect square that you inscribed on the lens, just like flash burns into smoke as the fire turns into a searing light that focuses out of this viewing lens over the four of you. And when the lightning clears and the light, like when, when Iramon blinks her eyes and the light clears, the four of you are gone. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, okay. the four of you begin hearing this, you know that music where it's like, like drumsticks on the edge of a drum and like it starts with just like a pair of drumsticks and then like more of them loop in and you start hearing like oh it's a the way it's the a tool rhythm al- it's a new tool a tool album yeah the way the rhythm starts like overlapping and like uh how how like how there's like a Doppler effect where like these things are happening at different speeds and you start hearing the ticking and, and clicking lining up and oh then boy, synchronizing and then lining up again and desynchronizing. That's what you start hearing. And as your vision clears, um, you're in this like ochre gold red realm. You're standing mm. on like a huge rusted metal surface, just a vast plane of rusted metal. Um, it's circular and you can see the edges where it falls off and this plane that you're on sort of like it connects to what looks like maybe a stair that's like a football field away in front of you. And when you look around, you can see that all of the light is getting filtered through all of these spokes and gears. And there's just like massive cogs and gears and flywheels and shafts and like, you know, cranks and little like, uh, there's like chains and, and pull wheels and stuff like that, just like stretched off into the distance and arcing up over top of everything, sort of on the horizon, you can see this massive wheel. And at regular intervals along the wheel are um, like polyhedral shapes. And at the, at the apex of the wheel, you're able to identify is um, like a, a brilliant scintillating blue cube and then there's, you know, like on another side, there's like an octahedron and on another side, there's a, you know, a decagon and, you know, like things like that, just sort of like at, at various intervals. I um, mean, you're, yeah. you're recognizing that you're seeing structures that are like massively large, but so far away that they look minuscule. We are inside a GPU's benchmarking software. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a little GPU face in the sky singing, I'm your GPU. <laughs> Sorek jumps off the edge. Um, Sorek throws himself off into oblivion. As you turn towards the closest edge and start running, you hear a voice call out to you, Sorek. And it says, Oh, wait, where is this? One zero zero one 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 zero 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 one 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 zero 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 one one one. It says, "Ho there, travelers! What is the meaning of this intrusion? There was no exchange scheduled at this time." Oh no! You, you there! Step away from the edge. You have not received the proper permission to throw yourself into the abyss. Stop it right now! 
Oh, I didn't know permission was needed. Oh, I didn't know permission was needed. Well, you should have thought first, shouldn't you? You should always know that permission is needed. You, you so, turn around totally to look. Right. You turn around to look at this this person, and it's it's like you've seen the old art of Don Quixote with like that that like pinnacled hat with the spike on it and like the little brim, the and conquistador like the hat, pointy beard. Yeah, like a conquistador hat. Um, there's a man standing there. He's got like puffy pants. And like a, a, a tiny goatee and like a tiny little mustache and a conquistador hat. And he's holding like a lance that also has a flag waving off of it. Um, uh, oh, let's see. Like, what does the flag? Uh, don't don't, no one expect don't copy and paste. Um, yeah, there's um, the, the flag has a, a, a like a symbol inscribed on it that's just XVX. Um, so the, the the interesting thing about this man, of course, is that he's not made of flesh, but instead of like rusted iron. Oh, that's okay. And you can like see in like a gap in his shirt that there's like, he's got like a breastbone and then there's like tiny little gears turning and spinning inside of his chest. He says, well, explain yourself. There was no exchange scheduled at this time. In fact, it has been quite some time since the last exchange was scheduled. Well, that, that is a mistake on your end, I'm afraid. We do not make mistakes, good sir. Not have, here in the good you house of Vixatrix. have been any scheduled? I, it is my duty and honor as the service to the queen to be uh, the tracker of such things. Well, we were scheduled, and it appears that you were not informed. <laughs> that, to lie good to sir, is heresy. No, it's not heresy. It's facts, my friend. We were following the rules, which is why I was so upset when you didn't recognize me. I almost threw myself from the platform. Facts. This is a pneumatic world. You're... Gaslighting won't work here, Sark. Facts are heretical in the highest order. All I'm saying is that we were told to be here, and here we are. And if you don't told have you might down, have been, but who who was it who sent you? The Queen, obviously. The Queen sent you? Yes. Well, my goodness, why didn't you say? I just did. Surely you have her royal seal. What was what, what what city was it that she was from again? I don't really understand such things. We only have houses here. Oh, um, let me see here. Sark begins to dig through his bag while looking at everyone like, ahem, ahem. You see me. Ahem. Like, I've like in an anime fashion appeared right next to this dude. Yeah. And I have like my finger yeah. like an inch away from him. And I'm like, he's kind of neat looking. He's like got little little bits that are clicking and clacking. I have a many little bits, yes. So can do you like regenerate or when you like if I chopped off an arm, would you be able to heal it back or would you need to like go to a mechanic? <laughs> he says if you chopped off an arm, you would immediately be carted to the periapt of peace. No, wait, the 12 hands of fate. That's what he says. You would immediately be caught off to the 12 hands of fate and I would proceed to the great architects who would reconstruct for me what I have lost. So mechanic. Well, of course. No, that answered the question. So okay. Go, Good, I'm glad you're satisfied. This is interesting. So like, uh, what, what about like, uh, you know, it, it, you see, I is just interested in the science of this. What about how do you deal with how do you deal with corrosion and like wear and tear? She's just like looking him up and down and like walking around him, also attempting to distract him from whatever Sark is doing at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, he says, okay, is corrosion that corrosion comes for us all in time, but we have good 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 uh, services to help keep everything in working order. If you look below, you can see the great rust depths where it, to whence we all uh, eventually return. But but who was it? Who was it? Or was it or? Um, I uh, yeah. Sarek hands him a scroll of pedigree that he carries on him at all times, signed by the queen. Uh, and more importantly, 
Uh, it is. It has all sorts of seal, seals and sigil saying mm. exactly how important his family is in the city of Ur. Mm. And uh, yeah, I will hand that over as uh, my, you know, why I'm here. Obviously, I'm allowed to be here. Yeah. He says, Zounds. <laughs> Aya laughs out loud. <laughs> she <laughs> Definitely, she laughs out loud. <laughs> Wisdom is a dump stat. <laughs> Zounds by the great skipping gear. <laughs> you really are related to the queen. Well, then, why didn't you say so? And why didn't anybody tell us that there would be an incursion? Well, if you're here in good faith, then you must certainly know the dance of good faith and harmony. Yes, let us perform it. I demand to see it. Great. Uh, I am going to, I'm going to read his mind and see, since he's thinking about it, if I can steal the choreography of the dance. You've yeah. got it. Oh, amazing. God. Okay. While laughing, because this the way this man talks is infinitely amusing to Aya. <laughs> she is hook line and she would buy merchandise with him on it incredible uh, she's move. like reading his mind i'm just like ah we just gotta just let us we gotta stretch it out right, yes, give us so, a moment uh, you know <laughs> dimensional travel and all that <laughs> yeah uh. you mean to tell me that you lot don't constantly keep your bodies in perfect working condition shameful you should take yourselves to the architect we're made out of meat. Gross. <laughs> Gross indeed. Some of us have more meat than others. I pity the people who have more meat than others. Oh, yes. The meatiest That sounds people. especially gross. Oh, super gross. Thanks. So meaty. I'm right here. So let's see. It's all right, you pal. Reject, you read the thoughts of certain I'm creatures. I'm like looking at Aya. I'm like, are you done yet? Are you, can we get a <laughs> Uh, like, like, if the creature that has an intelligence are... lore, it's not affected. You will initially learn the surface thoughts of the creature, what's on its mind in that moment. So as soon as you detect thoughts, mm -hmm. um, you you detect this this man thinking, um, is Tanith mad? Is she angry with us? Okay. And then I probe deeper to see if I can find his the, the cool. recollection of the dance. Yes. So he must make a wisdom saving throw. If it fails, then you get deeper insight. Yeah. Yeah. Roll yeah. on the 20 minus three. I Mine's think that 17. fails. Yeah, that fails. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Then um, that means that um, you gain insight into its reasoning, its emotional state and something that looms large in its mind. So um his reasoning is, um, so he's feeling fairly stressed. Like he, he, he does seem to feel like it is indeed his responsibility mm -hmm. to like manage people who arrive and to like make sure that the procedures are followed. Um, that's his reasoning and his emotional state is stressed. He, he, he doesn't like this surprise. Um, something that looms large in his mind is the dance of good faith. And so you can see in his mind the, the steps of the dance of good faith and harmony. I do them. I follow, <laughs> trying to make it look like I'm also just doing yes, them. Yes, I do yeah, do the same. You have to. Come on, guys, the, the dance. You put your left foot out. You put your right foot out. You okay, so. Arm, and then you turn it all around. This is going to be a group performance check. All right. Aya has advantage, but the other three of you have disadvantage. So would all of you roll performance checks? Oh, Aya with advantage. Oh, I'm just going to roll real well. That could be a problem. This is butts. Shit. <laughs> so I got 27. Like, Hello, my baby. Hello, my honey. <laughs> a 13. <laughs> completely wrong. <laughs> surprisingly enough, is Fuck. an entirely acceptable performance of the dance no. of good faith and <laughs> harmony it's it's disadvantage oh it is disadvantage it is disadvantage oh, oh shit. so, so sorry i actually got a four four six and eight so it's it's kairos who carries the day no i got a five if we're oh no yeah six. yeah Oh, four, right? four, four, five, and eight. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Well, I'm in the front nailing it. Hey, nanny, nanny. Hey, nanny. Yeah. 
<laughs> I like tried to so, step forward to follow Bronze and okay. just fell down. Like I just fell on my face. Uh, Aya is performing it perfectly, like perfectly in time, perfect shapes, per perfect lines. The other three of you are just like completely at a loss. You don't know these steps. You're having a hard time filing Aya. The, the steps to this dance actually like shift in time to different like metric beats that you can hear of different massive gears like ticking in the distance. And so it's just really like rhythms. It's like 1713 like time signature and shit like that. Like wild. Anyway, he says, stop. I have seen enough. It is clear that at least one of you was sent here in truth, but the others of you seem to be intruders. Now- No, we used to know it. We just forgot it. You know, the says, population due to planar shit it throws off mountain. your inner ear balance. And then from there, uh, it's really hard to keep time. And so uh, you would have Yes, I, grab my it says, right. I can't do it right grab now. Grab my spear and shield. You know, I have heard of the inner metronome of flesh creatures being flesh broken by various circumstances. But Metal rules are rules. And if you it. want to enter our realm, then you must perform a service for me. Okay. How about just what we, do you want? Can we just duel? What do you mean, okay? <laughs> we can't just fight this. I like helping people. I like being helpful. I don't mind. He what says, the, the rules do not demand a duel, good sir, clockwork uh, defender. <laughs> <laughs> I literally do that. I'll take it. <laughs> I, point, I point at him and laugh. I'm like, <laughs> yes, in order to enter the realm, the rules demand that you perform a service to me, Vandercour, the clockwork sentinel. Hmm. What do you need? Oh, service. Dude, this dude's great. What'll it be, Vandy? Nice. He what gestures like off to your left. He's the where you see defender. like you you notice now that this large circular platform you're on one is rotating slowly. So like you you've sort of turned maybe like an eighth of the way away from this huge like circle in the in the distance. Um, but two that it has like various gears attached to the edges of it and like crankshafts ascending and descending and like you know different structures. And he points off to your left where there's a small circle attached to the side of this gear that you're on. And he says, there is only one other thing that you could do to prove that you are here in good faith. The four of you must proceed down the spiralized crankshaft over there and at the bottom recover for me the periaptive piece. It is a silver trapezoidal object at the base of the shaft. There is only one, you can't miss it. How big is it? How much does it weigh? It is approximately, and he holds out his hands like about the size of a football. He says it is about 18 pounds, 18 pounds and um, six ounces. So question, you said this guy was stressed, right? <laughs> if I see. <laughs> you said this yeah, guy was right. stressed He's feeling a little stressed. Um, can I and... use my uh, eye for detail to figure out why he's stressed? Yeah. Oh, yeah, go for it. Roll it up. Yeah. Do we have to end early? I would love for you to scout this place because I would like oh, to solve yeah, the puzzle. We do. we we do have to end, but um, roll, roll your eyes with detail. I'm Sorry. noting the time. <laughs> I have to go get my teeth filled. Sorry, Jack. guys. <laughs> this one's on me. Yeah. Just didn't want oh. you to miss it. Uh, Sark, he's stressed because you're not supposed to be here, and he's not supposed to be here. Interesting. And that's where we'll end today's show. I like him a lot. He's really cool. Okay. Well, uh, that is it for us this well. episode. Let's quickly run around this screen, find out what everyone's up to. Britt, what are you doing? I don't know. I'm just doing things. I'm still in my writing class, so I'm going to do my writing assignment. Uh, and I got some new stuff for my apartment, so I'm decorating and reorganizing, buying little boxes and containers for everything I own, so everything has a little box and it's all labeled. It's so much fun. Excited. It's so much fun. It's so it's super fun. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not Britt Wiseman anymore. I'm Britt Posen now. Jack. Yay! Uh, that's it. I hope Bronze has a nice appointment at the dentist, and I hope everyone has a good weekend. Thank you, <laughs> Stephen. What's going on with you? Oh, nothing. 
it's all chill. Just working hard on the game. Bronze. Hi, hello. I'm killing it as per usual. Um, I'm saying that ironically, but it came out very sincerely. So I'm going to go forward with that energy in my life today. It's true. Uh, I just uh, had my appearance on Acquisitions Incorporated, which was Yay! super exciting. So cool. Yeah officially a part of that cast is such a great honor so excited for that still running um my tuesday night games on shikar for D. &D. we just had our 25th episode which is super great jesse and i uh just did a new episode of mcu crew we're now doing trailer reacts and they're 45 minutes long which is on brand for us so uh <laughs> we were so like 10 15 minutes, minutes tops yeah, yeah <laughs> so you know check that out if you want mcu crew everywhere um yeah you can follow me on twitter you can follow me on twitch i'm playing death loop this week cool eric what's up with you i'm pen dragon and uh watching the wire again because i'm <laughs> obsessed and uh now i kind of want to play death loop see what the hype's all about death loop good death loop good all right, well, uh, hey, you can see me here on this channel. You're already here. Thanks for coming and uh, hanging out and more stuff on, uh, you know, I got a video I'm working on for this weekend. So whatevs and uh, catch me later today when I get to role play a goblin. That's always fun and chaotic. And so, uh, you know, whatever. That's enough for me. See you all later. Have a good one, everybody. Bye. Bye.